We have a lot of gear. We really should do something about this. In this video, we turn our empty basement space into a fully functional gear room. This is Film Builds. So it all started with a call from our boss, Ben. The gear room's a bit of a mess, to be honest. We've got to get stuff away. I think we need to build an entire new gear room. Do you reckon we can do something about that next week? He's right. It's time to upgrade our tiny dark gear room. We need something that looks good for filming, stores gear securely, makes charging easy, can grow with us, and can be assembled in about a week. With that out of the way, I spent the next couple of days designing the perfect space. To start, I went through the current gear room and gear list, grouping the gear into functional groups. This will mean that we can place gear that is used together near each other. Once done, I mocked up the new space in Blender to see what we're working with, and then researched some shelving options. We picked one, I modeled their catalog, and started filling the space, looking for a rough arrangement that would be functional. We'll have some challenges with tripods, so I'm thinking of building a wine rack style shelf, and then for the more sensitive items, like lenses, we'll build a draw divider system. With everything planned out, it's time to press order and wait for delivery of... Shelves! So it's day one of the build, and it's time to knock together some shelving. So we ended up going for Lundia for this, um, for a couple of reasons. It's sustainable, it's locally made, it's modular, and most of all, it really fits the syrup aesthetic. Now, it's not as cheap or accessible as a metal racking system from somewhere like a hardware store, but it's really long-lasting, and for us, this is a long-term investment. Now, it cost us about 11 grand New Zealand all up for all of the shelves and the drawers. The Lundia system is pretty simple, slotting together with pins. We're not sponsored, we just like them. Now we went for shelving that's 457mm deep because it's good for our large items, especially like the travel cases and bags, and also it works with these drawers. So we've got a bunch more to do before we can get onto the custom pieces, so let's knock all this together. Obviously drawers aren't going to be the perfect solution for camera equipment. Things roll around, yada yada yada, you know the deal. So the logical solution is a divider system. We tried to find something online but couldn't find something perfect, so we decided to prototype up a version of our own. The system is going to be sort of two pieces I think. A MDF core, uh, which is covered in felt, and then these little 3D printed plastic joiners that sort of just slot on top and hold everything together. This is just a prototype, won't be orange. This will leave us with a system that is really customizable so we can make different boxes of different shapes and sizes and also everything should, in theory, have a place that it can come out of and go straight back into. When selecting materials, you want to make sure they'll protect the equipment and not shed fibers or dust all over your gear. To make all of our dividers, we're going to be using 6mm MDF and 3mm felt. So we've got our full sheet, we're just going to rip it down into 120mm divider sections, cover them in the felt using spray glue, and then we should be able to chop them down to size just using a drop saw. Stretching the felt over the MDF isn't too hard, but if you're doing longer sections, an extra pair of hands is helpful. We clamped these down between some 2x4s while the glue hardened, and just trimmed off the excess with a craft knife when dry. At the same time, Matt got the connectors finished up and onto 3D printing. If you want to make your own, we've put up the print files on the blog article. Head to syruplab.com forward slash education, or click the link in the description. We've got the connectors, so we can move on to cutting the dividers. We're going to chop our first divider on the drop saw, using a piece of sacrificial MDF so we don't mess up the felt, and from that first length, we'll be able to work out how long all the rest of the dividers should be. We still use a lot of our older bodies for time lapses, so each one now has its place alongside the new mirrorless cameras. With everything for this one done, there's only uh, 15 more draws to go. Stick around, because you could win a bunch of film gear at the end of this video. While well, Chase finishes up the drawer dividers, I'm going to create a storage system for the tripods. We're just going to do this by creating a wine rack style system that's going to slot in underneath this bench top. It'll give us quick and easy access to all the tripods so we can get them in and out quickly. And to match the rest of this gear room, we're just going to be building it out of plywood. Rather than taking the easy option and making a gridded cubbyhole system, we're going to go for a lattice design. This is going to make our lives a lot harder, but it's going to look a lot better. The rack should help the tripods from bumping into each other like they would on a regular shelf. After cutting the long continuous sections, I added the shorter joiners to form the lattice. For connecting these all together, it ended up being strong enough to glue and brad a strip along the edge, and then we added a screw from each side. We finished it off by screwing it into the bench top and upright, and added a pine frame to the front. Last time we counted, we had almost a hundred batteries. And as you can imagine, keeping them all charged is a bit of a nightmare. So to make managing this easier, we're building a bit of a charge wall. Charge wall. 
The idea is that when we come back from a shoot, flat batteries can go in an empties drawer on the left, be cycled through charges on the wall where they're easy to see, and then go into a charge slot in the drawers on the right. For the base, we're using metal pegboard, both for aesthetics and also because it means we can attach these little neodymium magnets to the back of all of our charges, and everything will just sort of like pop off and back on again. It means we can shift stuff around to take charges with us when we need to. Now we did check with an electrical engineer if you are okay to attach magnets to charges, and they say it should be totally fine, but if you don't feel comfortable for any reason, you can always use Velcro. To hide the cables down the back, I drilled through the pegboard with a step drill and fitted a rubber grommet to protect the cable. If we end up changing the design in the future, these holes should still work, or a new pegboard sheet costs about 50 bucks. We attached this all to a pine box, and I got stuck into some cable management with some zip ties. I'm very much not a pro at this, so I'm just collecting groups of cables together and feeding them down in a way that looks clean. We're using a mix of the original chargers and these Pro Cubes from Manfrotto that are great for charging multiple batteries at once. With everything sorted, it was time to affix it to the wall. We made sure everything was level and then attached some wooden mounts using masonry anchors. For the mount, we're using a French cleat, just two pieces of ply cut at 45 degree angles, allowing for easy removal and also a little bit of left to right movement. Nailed it. And with some finishing touches, it's time to move into the finished gear room. Do you want to win a bunch of the gear we used to shoot this episode? We're giving away a brand spanking new MVG 300XM modular gimbal from Manfrotto, and a gimbal, perfect for jib style shots on the move. All you have to do is check out the link in the description and sign up to our new Syrup Lab newsletter, where we share tips, tricks, and guides to all things filmmaking. Or share this video with a friend. T's and C's apply. Thanks so much for watching, and if you learned something, leave a comment down below. For more episodes of Film Build, subscribe to the Syrup Lab channel, and check out the full article on syruplab.com forward slash education.